Hello everyone, my name is James Pruitt and this is my second lecture on, on uh, generating functions. And to recap last time is we constructed a, 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 a commutative ring out of sequences. And let me write down the, the addition and multiplication operation on sequences real quick. The sequence is A. Okay, the, the sequences are our sequence we're going to include zero this is the natural numbers is uh, this is the domain into the range of complex numbers and we're going to define addition is we're just going to add corresponding terms to define addition and multiplication is going to be defined this way. Uh, we're going to pick one one uh, element from here and then we're going to look over here for uh, 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 such that the two elements, we're going to find pairs of elements, one from here, one from here, that their indices add up to n. And then we're going to uh, uh, multiply them together and sum up to all such pairs that exist. And there's only a finite number of terms because our indices have to be non-negative. So there's only a finite number of integers, non-negative integers that add up to n, the non-negative integer n. So that so that's that. Uh, so this is our this is our commutative ring and it defines our algebraic structure. And we said that the reason we have this algebraic structure is we're given these recurrence relations. Uh, such as this one we talked about last time. A and we want to find the sequence that satisfies this these constraints here. But the problem we said with the, these, they're involving complex numbers. They're not involving sequences. So we're, the, it's limited to what we can do with these. We can't do much algebra to get a sequence out of this. So what we want to do is, since we define this algebraic structure up here, we want to re transform uh, these recurrence relations into equations involving sequences. And we have, we can create equations uh, We can uh, create uh, 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 equations, algebraic equations with sequences. And so we want, we want to do is transform this recurrence relation into an algebraic equation involving sequences. And we did just that. We said that A, which is a sequence, we're going to let, it's a generating function, is equal to x times A. Uh, x is a, a, a generating function for a sequence plus x squared. Uh, times a plus x. So what we did, we took this recurrence relation and we transformed it into a uh, algebraic equation involving sequences. So now we want to uh, uh, solve this equation, and and we're going to start working on that. We're going to today we're going to start talking about the algebra, um, ha, uh, the algebra of sequences. And I'm going to start something simple, and I want to define this sequence a. Uh, I'm going to define a sequence a where a0 is equal to 0, a1 is equal to 1, uh, an is equal to 0 for n greater than 1. And then I'm going to define this other sequence, b sub n, equal to n. And I want to show you that the multiplication, how the multiplication looks like without using generating functions. And then we're going to compare the result to what we'd get with generating functions. So, so we got this sequence an, and we're multiplying it times the, the sequence bn, and we're going to call the product cn. And we know that c0 is equal to a0 times b0, and that's equal a0 is 0 and b0 is 0, so that's going to be 0. And then cn for n greater than 0 is equal to the sum uh, of all the i plus j's equal to n of a i b j. And we know we only have one non-zero term in this A sequence, and that's the A1 term. So we can just go ahead and write that down, A1. And since uh, we, we only have one term, since uh, 
we have to satisfy this relation. So 1 plus something is equal to n, and that something is n minus 1. So b has to be the n minus 1 term, right? And there's only one, so that's it. And that's a1 is 1, so that's going to turn out to be b to the n minus 1. So the generating function for c is equal to b0 x plus b1 x squared plus b2 uh, x cubed plus dot dot dot. And if we look at that, that's just x times the generating function b, where b is b0 plus b1 x plus b2 x squared. And that's what we expected. Uh, and that's. Uh, I don't know if it was necessary for me to do that, but we did it. Uh, and I want to talk about finite sequences. A finite sequence is a sequence with a finite number of terms terms f with a finite number of, let's see, I goofed that, my brain's not working, okay, a finite sequence is a sequence with a finite number of non-zero terms, and we can write those as polynomials, that's the, that's the point, so the generating uh, sequence of a uh, of a finite sequence is just a polynomial. It's not a power series. So here's an example. Here's two examples of sequences. So if I say one plus x, uh, this is a finite sequence because it only has a finite number of non-zero terms. So we got a zero is equal to one. A one is equal to one. Uh, a n is uh, equal to zero for n greater than uh, one. And then I could write this 2 plus x, and that's uh, b0 is equal to 2, b1 is equal to 1, uh, bn is equal to 0 for n greater than 1. And this, too, is a, a finite uh, sequence. So uh, the, the great thing about this is it's easy to multiply. So I got um, if I multiply these two sequences, I get out uh, 2 plus 3x plus x squared, and this uh, new uh, sequence has z0 equal to 2, c1 equal to 3, uh, c2 equal to 1, and cn equal to 0 for n greater than, uh, z uh, greater than 2. So that's finite sequence. And then I want to do a little notation real quick. Um, um, let a be the generating function of the sequence a sub n. And then we want to write down this notation. Uh, bracket x to the n times a is just equal to a sub n. So if a, a is the generating function, it's uh, a naught x. Uh, a a naught plus a one x plus a two x squared plus uh, dot 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 plus uh, a n x to the n plus dot dot dot, and what this does is just gives us the coefficient of the 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 x to the n term. It gives this this this. Uh, this power, this x to the n, uh, this notation says I just want the the the, the coefficient of this x to the n term, and that's going to uh, help us to clarify some of our, our our clarify some of our thoughts. Uh, okay, so now I want to prove a theorem, and and, and as far as the algebra is concerned, one of the things that you're interested in is, is, is multiplying by inverses, multiplicative inverses. And the problem, on uh, uh, commutative rings, uh, if they have every non-zero term has a multiplicative inverse, it's called a field. But ours is not a field. So there are terms that don't have a multiplicative inverse. And the generating function of one of them is x. x there's nothing I can multiply by x, the sequence that, 
whose generating function is x, nothing I can multiply by that that's going to give me uh, the multiplicative identity. And let's see, just to, to define the multiplicative identity where uh, I'm going to call this, this is the multiplicative identity. So, so this is going to be the multiplicative identity where E0 is equal to 1 and EN is equal to 0 for N greater than 0. Uh, so, so, uh, so there's nothing I can multiply X times to get, me, to get this, to get this sequence. So X has no multiplicative inverse. And I want to talk about one theorem, and we want, and, and so we have a lot of terms, a lot of sequences that don't don't have a multiplicative inverse, and it's going to be a little more difficult than the normal algebra we're used to. So we have to keep those guys in mind. So I want to start to qualify which sequences have multiplicative inverses. So I'm going to prove this theorem right here that says that if uh, the sequence a n has a non-zero constant term and the constant term of a sequence is just uh, the the complex number that that zeros map to so so in this a zero is the constant term and it's non-zero uh, then uh, a n has a multiplicative inverse So if a n has a non-zero constant term, then a n has a multiplicative inverse. And I, I'm going to get on the sidetrack, right? There's constant sequences. For instance, say, uh, if a zero is the constant term, in this case, a zero is not equal to zero. That's our hypothesis, right? So we, we can define constant sequences. Uh, for instance, let's, let's let b, uh, b sub n, is a constant sequence if uh, uh, b n is equal to zero for n greater than uh, zero. So all the non-zero terms of uh, uh, all all the all the non-zero index indices of of b is or the non-zero uh, terms of the domain are mapped to, to zero so b zero can be either be not zero or zero it doesn't matter but but that b sub n has to be equal to zero for n greater than zero so for in our generating functions are just constants are just complex numbers so so we'd have uh, one such so if we let b zero equal to one over a naught then this is a constant sequence and we and its generating function is just the number one over a naught right so so the point as far as our theorem is concerned is that we can always assume if we have a sequence who has non constant uh uh let's see I'm getting my brains shortened if we have a sequence such as a, a sub n of our, our hypothesis whose uh, constant term is non-zero, we can assume it's one because we can just take if 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 a is the generating function of a sub n, then we can just multiply that sequence by a since a zero is not zero. Uh, then this new sequence that this this product is has a has a has a a one for its constant term. The, the the constant term of this sequence is one. So we can assume that a zero is equal to one. And we're going to have to stop right now and then I'll get right back up on the next lecture and finish this uh this the proof of this theorem. Okay, thank you.